Hi, I'm Jesse Braun, and this is my speech. Knowledge spawns imagination, and imagination provokes action. With the understanding of another country's culture, action will be taken. But what is that action? A trip to Munich, Germany, of course, where you'll find the, mo the world's most famous beer festival, Oktoberfest. I'm going to present a brief history of how Oktoberfest began, so there's a better understanding of why this festival originated. Now, this tradition started on October 12th in 1810 to celebrate the marriage of Bavarian Prince Ludwig to Saxon Hildburghausen Princess Therese. It took place on the Theresienweiss, which means field, or I'm sorry, grassland of Theresa. This Theresienweiss is a 103 acre meadow and it was named after the bride. Now, the wedding was so popular that it turned into a German tradition celebrated in Munich, Germany. The main event was a horse race, and the agricultural show was added in the second year. In 1818, a carousel and two swings were set up, and also makeshift beer and food stands were set up, too. Now, the beer, the beer stands were replaced in 1896 by sponsored beer halls, and these beer halls are similar to today's local brewery-hosted tents. You know, like, at the Northern Wisconsin State Fair, you'll have the Liney Cools tent and the beer garden. That's kind of what it's like. Now, the partygoers were entertained by tree climbing competitions and wheelbarrow and sack races, even mush eating contests. Isn't that weird? Barrel rolling races and goose chases. Now, it seems like they were entertained a lot easier back then. <laughs> in 1870, the mechanical rides were introduced, and in 1908, Germany saw its first roller coaster at Oktoberfest. Now, in 1960, the horse races ended, and the festival eventually moved to mid September for better weather conditions. Now, this is the coolest fact I found from Vistawide.com. It says over the past 200 years, Oktoberfest was canceled 24 times due to cholera epidemics and war. It's just intense, if you ask me. <laughs> the history of Oktoberfest is incredibly valuable and very informational to those who want to learn about why this festival is so colossal. It is essentially important to know the history of such an event when you want to go and visit that country. Now, today's festivities... All this information is from GermanOriginality.com. It's a great website. It's all about German originality. There's still an agricultural show every four years. So it's like the Olympics. You know, every four years you have an agricultural show. It still takes place on the Theresen Weiss, which is known to locals as Weissen. <laughs> and Munich's mayor always opens the festivities by driving a wooden tap into a barrel of beer saying, Oh, zap this. Excuse my German. Which means it's tapped. Now, the first Sunday of the festival, you have... Everything big. The parade. You have costume, riflemen, the procession. You have over 7,000 performers made up of marching bands, groups in traditional and historic uniforms, horses, old-fashioned carriages, floats, and they parade around for two and a half hours through the city center. On the second Sunday of the festival, you have the open-air concert by the musicians and the bands, and everybody's there for the music, and the guests can ride a Ferris wheel, the roller coaster, a water slide, they can navigate through a labyrinth and visit a haunted house, watch a variety of performers, and play dozens of midway games. That sounds fun. Now, it starts in mid-September every year, and the first Sunday in October marks its finish. Now, what comes to your mind when you think of Oktoberfest? Beer. Beer that they have in Germany at this festival is called Marzen, and it's darker and stronger than traditional beer that we'd find in the U.S. It contains up to 6% alcohol, and from what I've heard... Um, the U.S. beer is about 4% alcohol, I think. Now, Marzen is bottom fermented. And, uh, Oktoberfest beer is brewed according to these strict German standards called the Reinheitsgebot, <laughs> also called the German beer purity law, which is much easier to say. This has been used since 1516, and there's only four ingredients allowed in the brewing of beer. Those are barley, hops, malt, and yeast, and that's it. Now, the six Munich breweries that are permitted to serve beer at Oktoberfest are August Steiner, Hacker Peschor, Hofbrau, Lauenbrau, Poliner, and Spaten. <laughs> Excuse my German. Now, beer is, is uh, it's served by the Mab, which is just a one liter mug, and it costs about eight euros, which is around $14 for US. The waiters and waitresses, they carry 10 of these one liter mugs at a time, so can you imagine a big tray, and they have to carry 10, otherwise they won't get hired. They also have to carry 6 gallons of beer, which is equal to 66 12 ounce bottles. That's just unbelievable. There's 14 large beer tents and several smaller ones. 
and the beer gardens provide enough seating for 98,000 people at one time. That's Chippewa Falls and Eau Claire put together in one place at the same time. Now, along with the drinking of delicious beer, it's also, to impor it's also important to eat a good meal during your trek through the festival. So food is one of the most important parts of Oktoberfest. It's readily available for everybody all over the fairgrounds. And the most popular choice is Hendel. Hendel is a whole chicken grilled on a spit and sold in halves. Now, the variations are um, pork or duck or goose, also spit roasted. The roasted meats like pork and potato dumplings served with red cabbage and apple dish called blau coal. <laughs> and local specialties include roasted oxtails and grilled pork knuckles. That sounds good to me. <laughs> Other favorites are massive soft pretzels and cheese plates and bread. The desserts are, uh, an example of a dessert is Dampfnudel, excuse my German, which is steamed honey dumplings served with vanilla sauce. And that sounds good to me. Also, there's Kaiser Schmarrn, which is sugared pancake with raisins, which sounds okay. Now, there's sweet snacks like pan roasted sugar glazed almonds, cotton candy, which is called Zuckerwatt, which is a lot easier to pronounce. There's glazed fruits, and of course, there's ice cream. <laughs> now, after drinking and eating, it's important to tune your ear into the many sounds filling the festivals. And uh, the music is very important, and it goes on continuously. Just tons of music. The most important one is oompa music. I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, it's called oompa music because of the oompa pa sound. It's an imitation of downbeats played by the bass or tuba. And when I think of Germany, I think of the guys in Lederhosen playing the big doo 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 like polka almost, which is included. Traditional folk music, popular music, marches and polka. <coughs> Excuse me. Now. As the evening wears on and more people are coming and staying and drinking and eating, the people start to dance, link arms, swing beer mugs from side to side, you know, just like you imagine, they've got it all down. Some people stand and they even sway on the tables, of course, and uh, I think it was really cool, before each break, the band offers, offers up Ein Prosit der, <laughs> I cannot pronounce this word, Gemute Linkheit. <laughs> which is just a toast to contentment, congeniality, and relaxation. Now, the international hits also play. I can't imagine Lady Gaga playing, but I'm sure it does. More international, widely known, I think, is the YMCA song, disco, rock-inspired rock tunes, too, and German drinking songs echo constantly from the beer tents. Now, today's Oktoberfest is seriously different from the original festival, and this is because innovative technology and travel play such a vital role. Communication also plays a key part because of tourism and the brilliant idea of bringing such a renowned celebration much closer to home. Now, there's tons of Oktoberfests around the world, and the largest by attendance is in Canada, Ontario, Canada. And it's uh, just huge. There's a, it's just big, very big. Now, that's the largest in the world um, besides the real Oktoberfest, and then the largest in the United States is in Ohio, and that has over 500,000 visitors a year, half a million people. Now, there's at least 110 or more festivals in the United States, and there's even one in my hometown, Chippewa Falls. They're in six, 36 out of the 50 states, and the states that have eight festivals in each are Wisconsin, California, Pennsylvania, and Texas. Now, OktoberfestUSA.com is uh, the website about the lacrosse, because the first Oktoberfest in USA was held in lacrosse in 1961. Now there was two employees um, uh, by the German officials and they wanted an idea, you know, some kind of festival that they could bring to lacrosse that could happen in the fall. And so these two employees with origins in Germany suggested Oktoberfest because that's what they knew. And so that was accepted by the officials for two reasons. One, because October is the time of color. And early October marks the harvest time in preparation for winter. So a festival at this time would surely provide an ideal relief valve. <laughs> the Oktoberfest committee was established, and that's how it all began. And in 1962, Oktoberfest, the term, was registered with the state of Wisconsin. And in 1963, Oktoberfest was registered and listed as a trademark with the federal government. Now, bringing Oktoberfest to the United States has made it a lot easier for, fo for folks to get the same experience without the $1,500 plane ticket, hotels, 
all their miscellaneous costs, seriously expensive to go to Germany. Now, how does communication factor into this giant festival? Well, we have basic German um, cultural differences. Germans tend to look directly in their conversational partner's eyes to show that they're paying full attention, so they're making serious eye contact. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the German who speaks most softly is the one to pay attention to, not the one who's the loudest, which might seem contradictory, but the source where I got this from, Wilson and Wilson, is very good, and I think that this is true. So, this is very unlike Americans because Americans tend to speak very loud to demand attention. People often follow someone who is very boisterous rather than someone who doesn't speak much, but that's different in Germany. Also, something I really like, which is from Wilson & Wilson, is a television ad that is effective in the United States will have to be translated into print media to reach Germans. Now, Germans are more print-oriented, which explains in part why there's so little advertising on German TV. Now, seeing how all these aforementioned factors come together really provides a great visual for everyone for Oktoberfest. The last segment features an over, overview of preceding objectives to provide a final understanding of the superb festival. Now, history's original Oktoberfest brought to the world something new, something different, and something cherished. It celebrated the gathering of friends and family and gave the German people a chance to have a great time while basking in their heritage and culture to the fullest. Today's Oktoberfest is among the largest festivals in the entire world and will continue to be for a really long time. Huge. It's so popular, in fact, that other countries have created their own versions of Oktoberfest. Now, there's always going to be communication differences and barriers when, you when you're dealing with another, cu another culture. Excuse me. Now, to learn and grow in our own culture, we must embrace these differences and try something new. So go to an Oktoberfest festival. <laughs> Go to an Oktoberfest. Now, there's one in Triple Falls, which is close, uh, closer than a lacrosse, so that'd be fun to go to. I've never been, but I want to go. So, in conclusion, knowledge spawns imagination, and imagination provokes action. With the understanding of another country's culture, action will be taken. So what is our new action to be executed? Saving up the money for the $1,500 plane ticket to Oktoberfest. That's going to be mine. <laughs> Thank you for listening.